All right, I'm going to go over adding some advanced things to your characters in Character Animator. One of those things is going to be how can we bring in a prop, uh, something to use that we don't draw ourselves, and then use it for a, a trigger. So what I've done is I've just Googled sunglasses. I literally have just Googled sunglasses. I'm going to open this image in a new tab. Always do that first so you make sure you're getting the actual image. And then once it opens in a new tab, right-click copy, pop into Illustrator, right-click, and paste. And you may have to go to Edit, Paste. Now before you paste, go ahead and lock your head and your body layer so you don't accidentally put it somewhere where it doesn't go. We don't want to mess up anything, okay? So Edit and Paste. There it is. It's on its own layer, so it's not going to mess with anything else. We'll move it in a minute, but we want to have it on its own layer for now. Now, you cannot use this in its, in its form right now. You have to get rid of the background and digitize this. So in order to do that, we're going to um, use the Properties panel. Let me undock this so I can see it better. And we're going to use Image Trace. So we'll go on to Image Trace here. And choose how many colors. So you don't want this to be too crazy. I mean, like if I go to sketch dart, it might, you know, see that's going to make it look like it was drawn. Um, six colors won't be too bad. We can still see some of the stri striations in the color there. Because it has a gradient, I would have to go like a lot of colors for it to still look like a gradient. I'm not that worried about it. I'm just going to go six colors and call it a day. So that's good enough. So here's mine. Once you get it traced, you're going to hit expand. That turns it into artwork as if you created it yourself. Now it's going to be grouped, so immediately go ahead and I'm just using it in properties because they just give us all the steps here. makes it really easy. I'm going to ungroup those. Um, you can see now why I had you not do it in the head or the body. Now we have a big old group of a bunch of stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to click off of it and click on it on the background and press delete to get rid of that white background. And at this point, now I'm ready to group everything back together. So again, you've got everything locked, right, except for this. That's important. And so I'm just going to take my selection arrow, draw a box around everything. That will select all of the sunglasses parts. Press Control and G to group it. And now I have one, and I can call it sunglasses. And so now we're good. Of course, I need to position this where it needs to go. So I'm going to scale this down and figure out where it needs to go on my absolutely cool owl. Decide what size you want them to be and all that. All right, I think that looks good. So I've got my sunglasses up in here and now I can put them wherever they need to go. In this case, I think the head would be a good place for it. So I'm going to put it in the head and I'm going to put it above the eyeballs because I don't need eyeballs in front of it, right? So I'm going to put it in here. Um, now this is locked, so let me unlock my head so I can get it in there. All right, there we go. So now I've got it in there. Now to double check yourself, go ahead and um, collapse that down so you know that that's in the head. You should see a preview now. You can see that little sunglasses in there. Now yours doesn't have to be sunglasses. You can have anything that you want. It could be, you know, something else that shows up, a light bulb, and they get a, a great idea, you know, or whatever. So I've got my sunglasses in there, and I've named the layer, and we should be good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to save it and pop into Character Animator. Now, I don't want the sunglasses to be on from the beginning, so I am going to turn the eyeball off and then save again so that the sunglasses are not visible from the beginning. All right, back into Character Animator we go. Here it is. Um, and so now at this point, I'm going to rig it so my sunglasses can be used. So I have to find the sunglasses layer, and there it is. We're going to drag it into the triggers so we can create a keystroke trigger for the sunglasses. Real simple, just click and drag and drop it in here. All right, there it is. It says sunglasses. I'm going to give it a trigger, say S or whatever you want it to be, and now go to record. I'm just going to test it out by pressing the S key. There we go. When I press and hold S, it stays visible, and when I let go, the sunglasses go away. And again, they're connected there to the face, so they move with everything else. Okay, that's pretty simple. So that's how to do just a really basic trigger. If you just wanted something to pop up, maybe he had a bunch of um, little hats or something. Now, if you had a whole selection of hats, let's say I had a bunch of little hats, then I could make all the hats grouped together, and I could have like a default hat that has the eyeball on it, so that one would automatically be there. And then I could have keyboard triggers for all the other hats, 
Um, but when you let go of the keyboard trigger, it would go back to the original head. So that's basically how that would work. Okay, now to do a cycle layers example, that's something that looks more like an animation. The example I did in class was I added some wings to my uh, owl. So I'll do that again um, as the example here. So I'm going to lock my sunglasses because I don't want to mess it up. And again, I think I'm just going to lock everything while I draw these. So I'm going to close this down. Um, and then I'm going to uh, start drawing. Okay, my layers are locked and I'm ready to draw my wings. Um, you could use whatever tool you want, pen, pencil, um, shapes, and turn them into, you know, whatever. All kinds of different options. I think this time I'm just going to use a uh, pencil tool. So I'll take this pencil and click on my character here and then create my drawing. So this is going to look terrible, but I don't care. All right, here we go. <laughs> so there we go. Like a turkey gobble gobble up in there. All right, it has no stroke and no fill, so let me give it a fill of some sort. Um, fill right here, of course, and I could choose some random color. I think that's just perfectly fine. And then I need a copy of this guy, so we'll just right-click, transform, and reflect, and press copy. All right, now I got two of them. So there's my little, my little flappy wings or, or whatever. Yes, I know he always has wings in the front, but let's just pretend this makes sense. All right, so this gives me one set of wings. So I'm going to go ahead and name this. Um, so I'm going to select both of these. So click one, hold control, click the other, and then we'll just go ahead and group, control G to group. Um, we'll name this like wing one, wings one. And then I need a copy of these, so I'm just going to drag this down to the little piece of paper button that makes a copy. There we go. So now I have a second set of wings. And then on one of these sets, and it doesn't matter, they, they can both be named the same, really doesn't matter. Then on one of these, I need to change the wings to look a little bit differently. Now they're grouped, so to get inside the group, you have to double click. Uh, so I'm going to double click one of these to get a hold of it. And then I can rotate it or move it a little bit or whatever. Now it does rotate in a weird spot, so if you need to connect it, you can move your rotation point over, um, and then you can rotate it by just grabbing a hold. So there we go, there's that one. And then I want to do the same thing on the other side. Double click it to grab a hold of it. Take your rotate tool, move your point up. Oops, let's back that up. Move your point up, if I can get a hold of it. And then choose one of these points just to pull from. I'm not really sure where my other one was because I can't see them at the same time, but all right. So there we go. Once I've got those, I've got two, one, two that are in different spots. We'll look and see. So there's one. Oh, I might have grabbed a hold of the wrong button. It's fine. There's one, and there's one. So they're just a little bit off from each other. Choose one of those that's going to be visible, and then we're going to go ahead and, and select both and make them the wings layer. So click off of everything. Click and hold control. Now you got both of them, and now we got to group the groups. So Control G yet again, and now we have the real wings. And then at this point, we're ready to add them into the body. So we'll open up the body, drag the wings all the way to the bottom so they're behind everything, and then choose which ones that you want to have visible. So, And you can still make changes to where they are, so this is not permanent or anything. All right, say I want that one to be my visible ones, and I'm going to scoot this over a little bit, so I'll double-click it again and just kind of move it a little bit. Get out of isolation mode by double-clicking. So let's say that's the one that I want to be visible, and then it'll flip to that one in the animation. All right, now that these wings are in place, we can save this and go back into Character Animator. Um, in Character Animator, set your rest pose, sit him down, um, and remember, you can still edit where these are at, so you're not stuck with what this is at the moment. We go back into Rig in order to set this up. And then the funny part here is you've got to point to your layer, and you get this plus sign. It's like in this column where this little Lego block is. It's called Behaviors. You're going to point right in there on the real wings layer, not on one of the specific wings, just on the main one. You get this plus sign, and we're going to add a cycle layers. This is like creating an animated GIF, which is what your wings technically are. So it just added that in there. So now you'll see that little block in there. And then we can scroll down over here in the properties all the way to the bottom, 
and then it tells you how to start it. So start when triggered. So you can choose um, if you wanted to. You could have it so it starts with a keyboard keystroke. Or you can just set it to start automatically. So I'm going to immediately set it. You could set it to do it one time or continuously. So I'm going to tell it to do it continuously. And you decide how fast. Now if it's on one frame, that's going to be really fast. So when I get in here, it's going to be doing that all the time. So like unless you want him spazzing out like that, that's probably not the one that you're going to want to go with. So usually five or ten frames just depends on what it is. Like ten would be, um, you know, some people might consider that to be too slow. Um, you know, so there it goes, like so. And that's basically that's basically it. I mean, that's how you do a cycle layer. Now you can do a combination of a trigger with a cycle layer if you wanted to. So if you didn't want something to show, you can um, have it hidden until you trigger it. So the other thing I created was, here's this idea. So above the head, we have an idea. So I go into here, and I have this little guy going up here. I've already brought it in. I've traced the bitmap and, and made it, you know, be where it needs to be. I'll just put it off to the, I'll put it off to the side just because it fits better. Uh, now, I'm going to make changes to this, but remember, I'm making an animation, so I need to do it on different a uh, different layer. So I need a copy of this guy. So again, I'm going to lock my body so I don't mess anything up. So I'm going to make a copy, pull it down. And you can have more than just two. I mean, I only had two, but you could have more than two. Now, on one of these, so I'm going to turn one of them off. On one of these, then, I need to edit this. And there's a bunch of layers in here. So, again, easier to just double-click. So I can double-click and get a hold of one. And then maybe I want this to, like, go down. And this one to be, like, you know, the, I'm just moving these around a little bit just to kind of make it more interesting. You know, whatever. Okay. So now I have two versions, like this version and this version. Or you can move the arms, you know, or whatever. But I don't want this to be showing all the time. So, um, again, I need to group both of these together. So, and I'll call, like, one of these idea one and the other just plain old idea, I guess, is fine. So I'm going to select both. Click off everything. Turn them both on so you can see them. Target the layers. Control. Got them both selected. Control G to group. And then I'll call this ideas. And then I'll um, open up my body and go ahead and drag ideas in here. I'll just stick it down here as well. Um, there we go. All right. So now I've got my idea in there. I'm going to turn it off, save it, and then pop back over into Character Animator. So now I'm in here. We got our ideas. There they are down here. So we can set up our behavior. So we click on behavior. We set it to cycle the layers and then come down and decide when. So when triggered or immediately, the order and how quickly. Let's say three frames this time. We'll let it cycle through continuously. Um, and so let's just now at this point go ahead and drag this in so we can set a trigger. So we come over here to ideas, drag it in to create a trigger and then come over here and give it a thing. I'll say I. All right, now in record, I'm set my rest pose. It's not doing anything, we can't see it. And when I press I, it pops up. Now if I press I and keep it pressed, see it's working. You can't quite see it very good on this background. Let me make it on black so you can see it a little bit better. There, see the little things bouncing around? So there we go. So in this case, we have both a trigger and we have it set to cycle layers. So you can do all kinds of different things with cycling of layers. Just remember, if you don't draw it, if you bring it in, you are going to have to trace that bitmap. You're going to use the image trace in order to do that and then expand so that it will show up in here. So anyway, that is like the super quick, fast way um, explanation, I guess you would, of triggers and cycle layers. So now it's your turn.